Hello, and welcome to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and I get to find stories that aren't written in the history book, but these people tell me their stories. Uh, today's guests are, uh, well, just wind your clock way back. We're talking <laughs> history. I want to welcome the Rows, or do I say yeah. it right, or do That's I say right. Row? No, O W is Owl. You spell it Row, and you say it Row. O W is Owl. <laughs> o E is Row. O W is Owl. <laughs> Let's not give me more phonics. <laughs> you can see that this is a lot of fun, people. Bernice, welcome to Journeys and Thank Journals. You. Thank you. And who's you. this guy? That's Jim. <laughs> Jim, the two of you have known each other quite a while. Oh, quite some time, yes. Okay. Yes. You, you knew each other before the wedding for a long time? Oh, about two years. Actually, he came courting my older sisters. Oh, so. really? <laughs> uh, they, made the, they made the choice of who the truth I got. <laughs> I love that story. We've got pictures of those sisters, right? Yeah, oh, yes, yes. The, actually, yes, the two that, uh, mm. th this is one, a second born out of 12. You come from a big family. Yes, there's 12 of us. And uh, this one is next to me, older, and this is next to her. Older. So when we moved to Oregon. Uh, 19 and what? 39. Okay, 1939. Uh, the fellow uh, on the ranch where we were out in the Missouri Flat area told Jim, or actually the um, orchestra of the weekly. The people of uh, Morrison and Dahl, um, and Morrison's Lodge down there. They started that later after, but they used to have an orchestra. They played. And uh, <laughs> had dances out of Williams Creek Grange every Saturday night. Oh. And so we three girls would go with an older man that was on the ranch there. He'd take us and we'd go when we came home with him. But we all, somehow he met all three of us. They had told him, you know, to meet those three new girls in town. And so after, <laughs> my folks, oh, oh, they were friends. So after a friends? while he found out where we lived and he started coming courting her. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, or this one, and then finally uh, they moved away, moved back. Oh no, Jim, your heart was broken. And then, uh, well, then I was old enough by that time. Because <laughs> you're just a young thing. Well, I was in the beginning. <laughs> I used to take all three of them to the, do you remember the open air pavilion out here on the creek and the Redwood High, on the, what's called the Miracle Mile now? There's a straddle of the creek there and they had dances there. And I'd take all three of them to the dance there. And he brought us all three home. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad he went. But the one, the little one, caught your attention, huh? Well, the others moved on. <laughs> <laughs> but you're never really young when you're the seventh daughter. <laughs> the seventh daughter? I'm the seventh daughter. Oh my goodness. Now, mom and dad, what brought them north to Oregon? Oh, better life on the farm. <laughs> well, when did your family come north? They didn't come north, they came from New Jersey, they came west. <laughs> and that was in the days of go west, young man. Uh-huh, and they did? <laughs> and they had a ranch out at New Hope, and that didn't work out where. <laughs> and, uh, but I was, uh, I was two years old when I got here or two and a half, so we spent one winter, they spent one winter in Boise, Idaho, and after one winter, they decided they had to move farther. <laughs> that, <west. laughs> that's enough of that. <laughs> um, I'm so glad you folks moved west. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> just, just share how it happens that you're on TV today. You met someone who told someone who told me. Mm. You ought to talk to those folks. How uh, was it? How was it uh, that you, we finally met? I'm not just sure. I don't know. I'm uh, not just sure. But I think that uh, it was probably Dave Markley, because uh -huh. he's a shirt tail relative of the family somewhere along. Oh, right. He is. Hmm. Uh, Robin Martin, Robin Wampler uh -huh. Martin. Hmm. And 
when he came with the story, you ought to talk to the Rose. Did I say it right? Rose, yeah. Oh. It's so, all right. We answer to both. And obviously, you've had fun with the oh, name. Oh, yes, yes. Well, now, when it was it that you decided you were, you were much older than this girl, right? No. No, he's only five years older. But at that time, you said yeah. he had to wait till you grew up. <laughs> <laughs> and you had an eye for him long oh, before. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, when he'd come calling and take, <laughs> take you girls. What is the truth about this picture? Well, that uh, was taken in, uh, during the war, about 1943, about 44. And we all four worked in the uh, shipyard in Richmond, California. This one is a nurse, was a nurse, and she was uh, high up in safety. And um, this one, uh, there and my other sister, I think they worked in a, a tool for a while. And, and how uh, about this gal? Well, I, <laughs> I started out working uh, in a pipe fitters, and then I moved up to the vice president's uh, office. I, I typed up the, the daily work for the yeah. ship boats. The boat uh, uh, foreman for uh, the, the, uh, the uh, boat te boss. team foreman. The, for the building of the boat. But you're all called riveters, aren't you? Even uh, if they, you... Rosie the Riveter, that's the well, nickname for all of them. That's yeah. his nickname. Because mm -hmm. it took you from Grains Pass, Oregon. And the, well, uh, the, mm -hmm. the sister that isn't there actually did run a riveting gun. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yes. The sister that is not in the picture, she put these big guns on uh, the, the front she, ship. She riveted the down the, the mounting brackets for the, the guns. Oh my goodness, you kids are full of history stories. You can see why I just love to go to their house and sit there and listen. <laughs> um, this picture is so cute that I'm just going to ask you to tell us about it. Well, of course. Uh, that's the tower shop. Yeah, that's the side of the Lamos building, which is still right there like that on M Street in 6 and M. And uh, well, that, that was just a. Uh, uh, Plymouth, uh, 38 Plymouth convertible. Good at that time, we, we wouldn't look at a car unless it was a convertible. Ah. <laughs> you and, and that those. was before uh, Martin went into the Studebaker business. When you say Martin, you're talking my dad. Your dad. Yeah, your dad, yeah. yes. Now, is that a dirt road? or? No. Uh, well, yes, at that time it was. That's dirt street. There wasn't any sidewalk there either. Oh. That's uh, <laughs> M Street. Jim. Yeah, M Street. M Street. It was a dirt. Well, right around the corner here, right behind you, was that a livery stable? Uh, it, it was on the corner, the livery stable was. There was a, an old battered up building that a fellow by the name of Frank Turner put together out of scraps and whatever, and it had a house behind it, and he had a machine shop in there. And that livery stable, I want you to draw a picture of what you saw, <laughs> what you remember. You kids got married in what year? We married in 1941. And this is what you look like? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, wait, look at those kids. Well, I, I, I want to say I was young, but we had our parents' consent. How old were you? Well, I was one, one month under 17. <gasps> Will those young loves yeah. last? <laughs> <laughs> well, the war was coming on, and I was graduated from high school. Oh, a young age. Yeah, and um, like I said, you're never really young when you're a seventh daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but what did your family think of you marrying this young thing? They were agreed to it. They were agreed yeah. to it. Families agreed, uh huh? We were married. I, I'm sorry. See, I was what twenty. I was past twenty-one anyhow at that time. But uh, <laughs> will it last? How many years? At sixty-seven. You've shown us an awful lot, and you still like one another. Oh, it's yeah. obvious. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have pictures here that uh, I'd like to learn a little bit about your work. There you are. Uh, yeah, the, I'm just, uh, that's the tire shop. That's the, uh, actually the showroom, the retail part of it. Uh, there's, I, I don't have, a, I guess, any pictures of the recapping plant. 
we had it in the the Moss building on 6th and M Street for a while. Then we built that two-story building that's in the middle of the block there. It's still now, there now. When he did this retreading. Retreading. Re mm. retread, retreading or recapping. Recapping. What was, did he come home with with rubber? Uh, no, he really didn't, but uh, I don't know how it's done, but. Well, you just, they don't stick, so you take an air hose and you just blow yourself off. <laughs> <laughs> so, there was no uh, chemical, nothing ever. I this could. is our son and his uh, fiance at the time, and uh, they're married, Bill and Deanna Rao. They live in Springfield. Well, you know, really, we ought to show you and that baby, because that there comes before. Are you in an uh, airport? Uh, that's uh, one of the, there was three different airplanes there that I owned at different times. After You're a pilot? Oh, yes. Yeah. I was yeah. during the war. Mm -hmm. I, what did you fly? I, I flew C-47s, and I hauled uh, paratroopers and towed gliders into combat. And it was all, all the invasions from uh, Normandy to southern France to the Holland invasion. To the did you know he was doing this stuff? Yes, oh, yeah. he was working in the shipyard. Mm -hmm. That's downright scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My brother-in-law, Al Morris, flew one of those gliders. And mm. I always thought that was awfully scary. How do you know if you're coming home? You don't. He rode in one of The only thing you can be sure in the glider, you're coming down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, that was right after the war. Do you uh -huh. still have your pilot's license? It's not, not uh, I haven't taken the physical, so it's not active right now. Fifty we some were, years, or how many years were you pilot? Well, I, up until uh, well, just a few years back, we, we always had, a, for many years, we had our own private plane, and we go, see, when that one sister that's next to her moved to Phoenix, when I'd get off work on a Saturday afternoon, we'd get in the plane and fly down there. Mike, <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Now, Bob Christie has a story about landing in Grants Pass in the dark, and there were no lights in the no, little... Oh, that's right. I, uh, we used to take our car and park it at the head of the runway and leave the parking lights on so you could see it, and then I'd use that for a lot. I could come down and land on that. And some kid would come by one day, and I, he said, I saw you left your car, you were flying last night, and I said, yeah. He says, you left your car up at the end of the runway, but you forgot to turn the lights off. I tried <laughs> to turn the lights off, but you'd lock the car. <laughs> How little we know. I, I'll tell you the story about Bob Christie, because he came in late and hadn't arranged for anyone to turn on the parking oh, light. Yeah. So he decides that he's going to buzz 6th Street. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the second time around, of course, everybody turned on their lights all the way up and down 6th Street, so he just lands perfectly. You can find it, yeah. <laughs> all you had to do was buzz well, there. We had uh, what we call a BT. There's, it's in the picture there, right is there. This plane? This, that's a Howard, the big one. The one in the, where your left hand is there, that's the BT. See, you can see it? And the little, the old, that one there. This, they were both about the same size. They both had the... Same size engine. And, uh, and uh, how many passengers? The Howard would hold five, the BT only held two. Now, you're telling me that after work, you and the kids would pile in? Yeah, or Saturday or Sunday, uh, most usually. Mm -hmm. Because uh, kids came to bless your home, right? Uh, Let's, who are your kids? L tell me about them. Uh, well, th this is. Uh, our son, Bill. He there, was, this one's Bill. He's yes, the that's old. Bill too. We, we took him uh, flying. He was about two weeks old. We took him. Why not? Why not? <laughs> How long did you stay in the hospital after Bill was born? Uh, well, about four days. In those days, you know, we'd stayed longer. So you are no more out of the hospital and went flying to where? Oh, yeah. See, Carrie was 10 days old when we took her to Loon Lake the first time. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this notice here comes from Dr. Moore. Uh, he started the Grants Pass Clinic. 
right and, after the war. And this is somewhat a bill. Yes, that's a bill for uh, delivery and beforehand of the baby, my care, and then the delivery. And six weeks after delivery, he would take care of uh, the mother and the father. Uh, and uh, it was, it didn't matter how many times a week you had to come in, it was just the same amount. And it only cost $85. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Moore, where are you when I need you? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you though, most people were working for 85 cents an hour or less at that time, too. Vic, now you're talking. It's yeah. all <laughs> now it's eight, eight and a half at least. <laughs> because uh, the Grants Pass Clinic is where our ne nephew, Marcel Wiggers, uh -huh. uh, came to join that staff. And well, we're well, just we're so... Were they up here on 7th Street or over on 6th Street then? Oh, that's right where it is now, out by oh. the hospital. Oh, out there? Yep. That, See, uh, that's had three locations. I guess we all get around. Here's that baby picture. Mm -hmm. So this big kid is the, our uh, daughter. We have just the two children. Uh, this is our son. He was born in 1949. She was born in 1960. Oh, there's a little time there. No wonder big Eleven. brother's feeling. Oh. Like <laughs> he was pretty proud of her. Now you've got stories that, I mean, I. Folks, I couldn't see, pull myself away from their living room because not only is it a beautiful view, but it's uh, full of stories. And you've got stories about my dad. Yeah. You've got stories about Glenn Woolridge. Why don't you share? I've been trying to think of the uh, man that drove the truck most of the time for your folks. Actually, he was still with them when they moved over where the brewery is now. Okay, when you think of that guy's name, you let me know, because <laughs> I don't know, I remember. Henry in, might remember, we might don't know. He okay, was, uh, Bob Black drove one time for Father, and he told me <laughs> only once, <laughs> he, he wasn't. Well, I'm telling you, that they had one international tr truck with a big van on it, and then they'd let the tailgate down, it was about eight feet wide, and stack it full. That poor darn truck was loaded down. <laughs> Now, you're talking wartime, right? No, this is before the war. Ah, because wartime trucking was essential. Yeah. An essential industry. Mm. While you guys were off fighting, he was moving furniture for the people who were being transferred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that meant that we had gas, you know, because you had yeah. to have gas. Mm. When, where were you during the war? Well, I uh, was in Richmond with my parents. In Richmond. That's yeah. after I went overseas. After, uh, but during training, during his training, uh, I was able to go various places in she, the United wherever States. Wherever I was stationed, she, she mm -hmm. moved and... Mm -hmm. See and the world. Uh, yeah, so the United some, States. Uh, uh, three cadet wives. And, <clears throat> and uh, let's see, they stayed, we, I was in Marfa, Texas but you'll have to get a big map to find. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, they were at uh, Fort Davis. Uh, yeah, it was Fort Davis, wasn't it? Fort Davis, yes. All this took. Uh, that was the closest place they could get a motel or anything. And that's, uh, Marfa is about 200 miles east of El Paso. So it's out there in the middle of nowhere for sure. That's where a lot of the... And they would, uh, my dad always insisted that uh, he, uh, she have a gun, so she had a pistol. <laughs> pistol packing mama. My, <laughs> well, he said I wasn't going to go running around the country by myself, so he insisted I took a pistol with me. And of course, I didn't. I never shot one, and I never did. But uh, but you had ammunition. Oh uh, yeah, loaded. I had it, but I. <laughs> and uh, when they, they, the three girls would get together, and they all were more or less ruined together in a room, and uh, when they would uh, play cards up there or something, they'd lay the pistol on the middle of the card table. <laughs> no. The Mexicans would see that, they'd leave. No, 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 this knew how to use it. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. don't mess with pistol pack and mama. <laughs> <laughs> now this is before the kids were born. Though. Oh no, yes, uh, this is during so, the war. So you went here and there. Yes. Um, they, the, uh, 
more time was tough time. And I've just found a beautiful poster. I think I'll show it um, about um, Merry Christmas, but it, to remember safety, to remember. And I guess we didn't have Christmas lights those years. No, I'm sure not. But see, this was in the San Francisco area. There were no outside lights. Really blacked out, any. San Francisco. Total black. blacked out. Or no? mm -hmm. Total black. Mm -hmm. The and streets, the cars had shields on the headlights. And it's kind of scary. So you were flying. Yeah. Over yeah. That was even scarier, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> and no communication that we have today. No. Uh, no handy talking. No. I one. had much better radios and uh, a little colder and and uh, my Bonanza than I had on the one that I flew overseas. Uh, you didn't still have flags, but shortly. <laughs> flags? Signal flags? Signal. I mean, For they, landing. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, were, <clears throat> they had at least had radios. They weren't much, we, but. We had a radio to talk to, <clears throat> but uh, most of the time for landing, they'd shoot flares for you in the. Uh, so you didn't have communication with the ground? A little bit. Ah! Scott, down but the there. enemy would pick them up, see? see the they... enemy, they didn't, uh, mm -hmm. and you, the, they would put what, uh, on the airfields in England, they had what they called perimeter lights, a big, and you could, you knew the general direction to get to that, and you'd find these circle of lights, and you'd fly around the circle until you found a double light, and you'd turn in, and that would put you on the final uh, approach for the runway. And then they would, uh, you didn't really turn your lights on at all. They, they just landed in, in the dark. <laughs> wow. Now, you flew to where? To all these countries that you've just? Uh, yeah. Well, I, the route I took to go over to England, we went, for, we went to Fort Wayne, Indiana, picked up the new airplane, went to Florida to, uh, uh, it's a, I can't. To get trained? You, no, just oh. to. To get, Where uh, did you get trained? Oh, I got uh, trained in uh, uh, what the heck is that? What was Indiana. It? No, the first. I'm talking about the uh, first. Well, was, primary was in. Oh, well, that was in. Uh, well, were you a Riverside. good pilot? Of course you were. Uh, well, I was. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I bet there's people watching us right now who say, you know, that. The Most of the, well, our whole group, we had, well, we had the first reunion it was 50 years after the war, but it got to the point where our squadron, we'd have a squadron reunion, then we finally had to have a group reunion, and now there isn't enough left to have the reunion. Okay, they because canceled. you're telling me. They're died off. 19 in. Well, see, it's uh, over 65 years since we, First got in that plane, 65. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you, you're a fascinating couple. I had to tell you, that's why I just couldn't wait to talk to you on camera. Um, the many stories that you shared, there's that Glenn Woolridge story, and I think everybody knows that he did a lot of river trips. Uh, Maybe he wasn't he quite was as the, the, famous as he thought. Well. He did some pretty, he was the first one, the Mercury Motors sponsor. He came up the river from Gold Beach to Grants Pass. And then nobody had ever done that before. And he's the one that dynamited the one passage. And, yeah. And they threw him in jail because of it. No, they didn't put him in jail. The Forest it, Service even gave him the dynamite to do it with. They but wouldn't the, load up to anything <laughs> like that. But they, loaded, they just said, here's the dynamite. And, and we don't want to know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> so he just blew a couple of rocks out of the way. Uh, and how do you know that story for <laughs> sure? Well, I've heard him tell it. <laughs> okay, so it's it's firsthand story. Yeah, it's a something. I, you know, I love to find that sources. So many stories, like what happened here in Southern Oregon during the war. Some of those stories, the kids would say, well. We saw a plane, we saw this, they, they shot one of their rockets down on my street, and oh. some of these aren't true. No, no they, the only thing that was true, they, 
or for sure, is that by... Uh, Out in Pottsville? Uh, no, uh, uh, toward the, uh, between Lake, uh, Klamath Falls and Lakeview, there's a little, what's the little town that's on? That's a tragic story. Uh -huh. so that's the one that they, uh, uh, some bombs, Boat they, were, they were putting them, tying them on balloons and letting them just drift across. Yeah, the one we know for sure was the one that landed out of Pottsville, just east of Pottsville, and somebody's cutting down a tree and said, I don't know what we found, but up in this tree, mm -hmm. and they went out, and Debs brought it. It was an incendiary ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was during the middle of the rainy season. And I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, if, they, if they'd have known the sun, those over in August or September, they could have caused a lot of trouble. You bet. But they did start one or two fires over by Brookings. I understand that. And I understand the pilot uh, that was in a submarine uh, came yeah. to visit. And was they brought the airplane. They couldn't put it in the submarine, but they built a watertight box on the deck of the submarine and put the plane in that. And then the submarine had surfaced and it was a float plane. So they'd, just, they'd slide it off into the water and away you'd go. You know, I want to learn more about that. I hope you guys will be on the show again so that we can talk about, you knew this firsthand? No, I didn't know that heard that part of it firsthand because I was overseas at the time that was going on. But, but Our neighbor told us though, Herschel Obey was uh, in the head of the forestry department at that time and we were his neighbor. He told us about it. Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Bernie Martin Beck and we're gonna ask more and more stories about war. If I can keep these people for a little bit longer, <laughs> their stories are just fascinating and meet somebody in your neighborhood with stories to tell and just sit and listen and then share, share with their family. Thank you so much for uh -huh, being my uh -huh, guest. Uh -huh, thank thank you. you. And we'll, you know, you brought up a number of things and I want to learn about uh -huh. all of them. All right. This is- uh, You ought to hear about Blind George, you know. Okay, you're gonna stay by because I want to hear that story. <laughs> uh -huh. Thanks for tuning in to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck and I get to meet the most fascinating people who've got all the stories. I'm glad you tuned in.